product of the Cinephiles, Film Guru here. So for those who are new to the channel, my name's Sean, also known as Film Guru. So this channel had my particular stay on movies and other film content. So thanks for joining me today. The others, sorry it's been so long that I've, since I've done a video, I'm just finding, struggling to find movies to really talk about and have something to say. But I felt this was a film I really needed to talk about. And as it mentioned in the description of this video, it is a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen this movie, don't watch this video. Today I'm reviewing The Batman. Matt Reeves' take on this DC Titan character. It stars Robert Pattinson, Paul Dano, Zoe Kravitz, Andy Serkis, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, and a variety of others. This interpretation finds Batman, Bruce Wayne, played by Robin Pattinson. He's younger and full of rage. He's only donned the cape and cow for the last two years. In these two years, he's made a name for himself, striking fear on, into the hearts of the criminals of Gotham City. With the arrival of a serial killer calling himself the Riddler, he along with Detective Gordon must work out the madman's riddles in order to find the next victim. Everything hits close to home for Bruce and he must make sense of his past and his connection to the Riddler. With the aid of Catwoman, he takes to the city to find the truth and stop this madman. I think Matt Reeves has done a fantastic job with this film. He's really reinvigorated this slightly stale DC character. We've seen a lot of Batman interpretations and it's been a while since we've had a really good interpretation of this character. And I think this is it. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. They are vastly different films, but they're both about reintroducing this character in a unique and interesting and fresh way. And I think Matt Reeves really accomplishes that in a great way. The last time we saw Batman was Ben Affleck and he was fine, but they didn't really do much with his character, I didn't think compared to the other interpretations that we had, especially the Nolan trilogy. And I just felt we needed something really fresh and interesting, and that's exactly what this film delivered on. It, it took this character and did something, something different with it, did an origin story in a different way, and I like that. I love the Gotham City in this film. It's a gritty and dirty play. It's a city that's nearly corrupt to the core, but it's still a fascinating world. It's dark, it rains constantly. There isn't really much light in the film or a glimmer of hope until the end, I guess, when, when you know, Batman finally be, works out who he wants to be. Not this sort of feared vigilante that we see in this particular film at the beginning. It's really, he becomes the hope. He, he sees the hope. He sees what he can do to change the, the city and, and to make it a better place. And I kind of like that. And I think all of this really adds to the noir detective feel of the film that, that Reeves is going for. It really feels like a noir film from the, you know, from earlier decades ago. It felt more in tone-wise like something like the original Batman movie. It just felt sort of dirty and gritty like that. You can tell Reeves took a great, a lot of inspiration from David Finch's Seven. Like this film, Seven has a real gritty and dark feel to it. It feels very uncomfortable and it's sort of showing the darker side of this particular, this world and these, and these characters. And it's very dark, it rains a lot, there isn't a lot of light and it just feels drained of so many things. And that's sort of what, I think that's what Reeves took is that, that grittiness, the, the gritty 90s movies that we had and, and that, that sort of period. And I think he really captures that and he takes that and harnesses it. It's similar, even down to the Riddler character, who's very, very similar to the John Doe character in Seven. They both have this plan, they're both executing it, and they, they both sort of feel that this is their purpose in life. And that's the tie together in that way. The only difference is John Doe accomplishes his goal where the Riddler doesn't completely. Let's talk about the acting for a moment. I think everybody does a fantastic job here. I think Jeffrey Wright's a really good, you know, Detective Gordon, and, and I think he plays it quite well and he's the only character that sort of offers a little bit of lightness or a little bit of humor in the film because it's very devoid of that and, and I kind of like what he does with the character and he's a very moral character and you believe in him you know and you believe he is this man. I think Andy Serkis is a really good Alfred. He sort of suits it. It's a different Alfred than we've seen before. He's got a limp and a walking stick. He talks about war. He's trying to look after Bruce Wayne but isn't really his father and they sort of connect but sort of disagree with a lot of things. Something with Alfred here that sort of surprised me to begin with. Alfred gets blown up and you, at first, your first instinct is to say, they've killed him and I thought that's a very ballsy move to do. No, they didn't kill him. 
but he took the brunt of it and he survives. But I kind of like that. It's sort of putting the only family Bruce Wayne has in peril and sadness and he's not sure what's going to happen to him and he has nobody else. And I kind of really like that. And I think Andy Serkis brought a gravity to that and felt really real and part of that world. Colin Farrell, oh my God. I talk about becoming, getting lost and immersed in the character. You can't even tell it's him. He's so unrecognizable here. He's put on a little bit of weight, but obviously he's wearing a bit of a suit and a bit of prosthetics. And he's really great as a penguin. He offers so much here. This is probably one of the best characters I've seen him play. And I think it is because he so, gets so lost and we can't even see who he is. And, and he just, he becomes the penguin. He becomes Oswald in such a great way. Even though he's not in a lot of the film, he seems, that scenes he is in is really powerful and he brings a lot to them. And there's talk of a spin-off series in regards to his character, and I'd really like to see what they do with that because I think he's a, a fascinating character and he has sort of places to go. I think Robert Pattinson's really great here. He has such a different and unique interpretation of this character. There's sort of a dark and sadness to him, but, but Batman and Bruce Wayne, he moves slowly. He doesn't say a lot, but when he speaks, it has a point. It's like he, he, his movements are for a purpose and a point and he keeps doing that the only time that you see him different is when he's he's fighting people as batman he's like this caged animal he unleashes he's punched hard and he just feels like this violent creature that you can't stop and he'll do anything he can to achieve his goal and he sort of comes alive like that and i thought that was an interesting way to go about the character i like the fact that Batman sort of, in all the other interpretations, just appears somewhere. It's sort of, he keeps appearing out of the shadows. With this, it's sort of, you hear him coming before you see him. There's a sequence at the start with his gang is doing initiation with his young member, trying to beat up this, this old, sort of trying to beat up this man. And they stop because they hear these footsteps coming up the stairs. There's a blackness there. And you expect him just to jump out. But you just hear the footsteps get louder and louder and louder and then he appears and then he moves slowly towards them and then unleashes and i love that i just felt that was so great because it's really creating that fear element to it rather than the mystery element that he appears and disappears it's like he's coming and he's coming for you and you can't do anything about it and i like that i want to see more of him as batman I don't know if they're going to do sequels. They had talked about it previous, but now it's sort of going into more TV series spin-off with the talk of doing a Catwoman one as well. But I'd like to see more movies. I'd like another trilogy, another two films at least. And I think we could go in an interesting direction. Besides Pattinson in this film, Zoe Kravitz steals it for me. Her Catwoman is fantastic. There's a coolness and, and sleekness about her and the way she appears and what she's capable of. And the chemistry she has with Pattinson's Batman is really great to see. She's on her own mission. She feels very like, very much like the Catwoman from the comics. She's doing her own thing. She's looking for her friend who's disappeared and she doesn't know what happened to her. And she only works with Batman to accomplish that. But she has her own goals and she has her own mission. She sort of interacts with Batman. I kind of like what they do with that. And I like that they sort of give her Father's Falcone in it, played by John Totoro, and I love that. It was kind of an interesting element to that. It just feels like Reeves has sort of taken all these characters and things and connected in a way right? to make it feel conducive, to make it feel it's all connected in some form. And of course, Paul Dano is really great as a Riddler. Really interesting character. And Dano is one of those actors who's a little odd, and but he adds something interesting to the film. And it's, his interpretation of the Riddler is really great. I like the costume he has. It's very reminiscent of another David Fincher film, Zodiac, with the mask and, the, and the, the, the suit he wears. And also the fact that the Riddler leaves these clues, but he writes in, a, in, an, in sort of a riddle form that they have to work out, which is very similar to the letters that Zodiac wrote to, to the press. It also has that John Doe element, especially when we get to, to see, you know, the Riddler's apartment, and he's got all these books, they're written all in shorthand, he's working out what he's gonna do. Very similar to John Doe when they go into his apartment and all these notebooks. 
it's sort of like taking those best bits and adding it to, to Batman that kind of really work, especially for a realistic take on the Batman character and the villains in the film. I like that Riddler has a plan and executes it. I like he manipulates Batman to do his bidding without Batman really knowing, and it's not revealed till the end that that's what he's done. And to the point that he has a following and all these men dress like him, trying to accomplish his goal, and I love that. I love that the city gets flooded because of what he's, what he's trying to do. And that Batman's so focused on getting him, he doesn't see what's really happening. There's a moment in the film where he, start, he starts to suspect that the Riddler might know his true identity, Bruce Wayne. There's an interrogation scene at Arkham where Batman goes to visit him and Batman's convinced that he's going to reveal his identity. But as it turns out, the Riddler doesn't know who he is. But he feels they're connected. He feels that they both work together to accomplish this goal, to bring the truth into the light. And Batman quickly explains, no, that isn't the truth. And it sort of starts to affect the Riddler in a way because he, he expected it to go very differently and it doesn't go quite like he expected and I love that. I love all the interaction between Batman and the Riddler and, and to see the Riddler's plan unfold is really really great. Like to is they take the Batman character he starts off as a vengeful scary character who just wants to punish those people who are doing the wrong thing or who he thinks are bad but after his interaction with the Riddler and the Riddler's gang, they capture one of them and Gordon says to him, who are you? And he says, I'm vengeance, which is something that Batman keeps saying throughout the film when they ask who he is. He keeps saying I'm vengeance rather than Batman. And it felt like in that moment he realised that being vengeful and violent isn't the way to go. You need to be some sort of light, some sort of hope in, in the world, and especially in Gotham City, and he tries to work towards that. So when we get to the end of the film, he's realised that's the Batman he wants to be. I thought the fight sequences were fantastic, the way they were filmed. There's this sequence that takes place in a hallway that's pitch black dark, and the only light is from machine gun to the, the villains firing at Batman as he's taking them down. Beautifully shot. There's a great car chase in the film where Batman's chasing the penguin and we get to see the Batmobile finally. It's his big zooped up thing with his big engine. It's so loud and moves quickly. And he takes out the penguin and then when he sort of gets out of his car and the penguins are watching him walk towards him and it's upside down. There's fire in the background, there's rain, there's just him in black and he's walking at his slow pace. It's just such great imagery. And I think Reeves does that throughout the film. There's some great imagery here that he's able to capture in this movie that gives it a real great visual sense. And even in the darkness, he's able to add something to it. And I love that. The film also goes back to when Bruce Wayne was a kid and they talk about the death of his parents, but they don't really show it, which I like because we've seen Batman's parents die way too many times. So this is kind of different in that regard. But it sort of shows Thomas Wayne a different light. He's, he was running for mayor when he was killed rather than just being like he was a surgeon, but he also was become the mayor and, and try and create change, but only to be killed for it. And the, the way they interpret it is kind of really different. And there's stuff that comes out that sort of shows that the Wayne's in a different way. And, and I was a bit shocked for, by this to begin with, to tell you the truth, because that's not what I've always seen the Waynes as. And I know they're trying to do something different and my hat's off to them for that. But it just felt like when it's revealed that Thomas Wayne went to Falcone to, to put fear into this reporter who was going to reveal all of this stuff to protect his, his wife, the guy ends up being killed. And it made him, made Thomas Wayne look like a villain. It's, it's later revealed that the reason he was going to go to him, him and his wife were killed because of that. But it sort of taints Thomas Wayne in a way, and it makes what Bruce was doing kind of seem pointless to begin with. That is until we get to the end and we start to see that you put by put, having this element into in the movie, it shows that Batman starts as his violent, vengeful character, and only becomes someone who needs to change the way he's going about things. I like all the sort of gadgets Batman has. Very simple. Even though he's so angry, he he doesn't allow himself to kill anybody. It's all about making them, punish them for what they've done rather than murdering them. And I like that. 
stays very true to the character in my opinion. Other things that I didn't like as much, so I really have been thinking about and I really want to have a second viewing this film to really make my mind up, but at this point in time, like I mentioned, the choice they made with the Tom, with Bruce Wayne's parents, Thomas Wayne, I, I don't know if I, I, I love that, but I see the purpose, but I know it connects all these characters. It just feels like there's so many characters, so much going on, that it's sort of hard to know whose film it is, and it shifts focus so many times that it gets a bit, a little bit confusing at times. And the Riddler's not in as much as I expected, but I guess it's like the John Doe character in Seven. There's only sort of little nitpicks there in regards to it. As an overall film, I thought it was fantastic. I thought Reeves had done a brilliant job, and he really made me come excited and interested in Batman again in a different way. Final thoughts. In the end, it's really about Bruce Wayne, this damaged man, trying to make sense of what happened to his parents and trying to save the city that's slowly decaying and falling apart and getting to the truth of what really has transpired and what is really transpired. I'm gonna give The Batman four and a half out of five. I thought this was fantastic. Definitely one of the best films of the year. It's number one in my top 10 at the moment. And it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it, because I think it's an absolutely brilliant film. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit subscribe down at the bottom. Follow me on Facebook and Letterboxd. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.